Welcome to Bandy, a podcast about being flexible in all of the ways that means. Thanks for joining us. My name is Andy Young, and I'm one of your jovial, somber hosts. Joining me, as always, is our other jovial and somber host, Beth Martin. Beth, a pleasure as always. What's the crack? Uh, jovial and somber. I thought I would like, uh, you know, the yin and the yang, right? Uh, to, <laughs> to sum up the entirety of the complex festive period. True. It is joyous and it is somber. It, it is, is like joyous and it's just that time of year where everyone is a giant stress ball. Yeah. And it's also because like, the way, I mean, I'm speaking purely of our weather. It's, you know, generally speaking, the weather tends to be colder. The nights are darker. It just kind of exudes that somberness, you know. They say, they, air quotes, they, they say that like, you know, this is the time to uh, go and plant your seed, like your spiritual seeds for what yeah. you want to grow in the spring. And it's a time to, you know, reflect and be cozy and warm in your house. And I'm just like, it. no, I hate, I hate it. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I want to I wanna leave. <laughs> get, me, get me out of here. Bye. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Those jerks, what do they know? I know, right? Tell us what to do. You tell me what to do. <laughs> um, so, Beth, uh, what is the crack with you? Um, what is recently? the crack? Um, okay, well, I'm rehabilitating a toad. Ooh. I know. I found it in the sunroom, which is uh-huh. like, it's not heated. There's a doggy door. It's like a room, but it's an out it's an outdoor room I don't know how else to explain it but it's like connected to the house and they built mm-hmm. onto like the people that had the house built on this like roof and then this like awning none of that matters so the toad got in through the doggy door I'm guessing and I didn't know it was there and then I had a mouse that was like eating the dog's food mm-hmm. and because I opened I f- forgive me if I already talked about this but like the mouse so went into all of my I like keep my like special box of like all my like memory box uh mm-hmm. and all that stuff and like my oh, yoga no. stuff in the in the sunroom and it went and like I opened it up and there was like mouse poop everywhere and I was like oh, oh damn it and I love me a good mouse like I'm not into like killing mice or anything yeah but um I don't want my high school <laughs> you know music tickets from like the fish show to get eaten or whatever yeah And I opened it. This is a really long story about how I'm rehabilitating a toad. That's right. They love this. But it was full. It was full of dog food. And I was like, who put dog food in my like most private stuff? And then I noticed there was a hole in the box. So this mouse that's like this big had been moving the dog food. Wow. Into that box? Probably like three cups of dog food. And I was like, wow, she's going through that food fast. Like she's eating a lot. Um, so I had to like clean everything and like decontaminate and hazmat and I don't want to get hantavirus and all of that. And uh, so when when we got the mouse out, he ran out, you know, back out through the doggy door and he was so scared. I felt so bad. Um, if I got, I was like trying to catch it in like a little hand towel and then Uh I I was like, maybe I'll keep it. Maybe it just needs a home. (laughs) I can give it a box. It can eat dog food. So then like. A couple of days later, things are like there's poop in the sunroom again. I'm like, what is happening? But it lo- the poop looks different, and I'm like, uh. And then I mm. look behind. I just looked, and I was like, there's a giant toad. It's big. It's like this big, it's uh-huh, like the uh-huh, size like of my wide. two palms together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I picked it up, and I was like, oh, this feels really like it didn't pee on me. And I was like, this is, must be a very dehydrated toad because mm-hmm. they pee on you. That's their you know defense mechanism smart so when you're in it trouble is. andy do you just, just pee. pee just pee. I'm, but yeah, beth i'm all over it i'll be dead for years <laughs> <laughs> so so we got the toad i'm feeding it mealworms apparently they, they like to sit in water and they poop mm-hmm. in their own water and so i'm but it's like it like doubled in size so it was so dehydrated so wow. i'm feeding it and we're probably gonna let it go today so nice yeah um, that's lovely and then yeah, so that that's the big news. And then Mike is traveling again, and he's back in Vegas. 
And nice. I, he's just like oh. this place again. <laughs> Break this heart. And he took a photo of the sphere. Have you seen Oh, yes, it? I have. It looks, so, I'm going to send them to you because it just looks so cool. I was like, that looks bomb. I want to, he was like, next time we go. I'm I like, saw, never going, but. like, I've seen the video of, like, they have, like, the wee sun graphic in the outside of it, then it wakes up and it's got, it looks around and things like that. But I also saw um, you 2s the inside of it when you 2 were doing, like, one of the sort of yeah. debut gigs in there and it yeah. looked pretty incredible. Um, So, yeah, I'm curious about it, but, like, also, you know, it looked like it would be quite overwhelming to kind of be inside, you know. Um, yes. Um, but yes. you know, kind of like like an IMAX theater where you always yeah. feel like you're gonna like fall sideways. Like as soon as we got IMAX, because we hadn't had it for years. I mean, we had there, there was a solid Dublin, but like it was not sort of in Northern Ireland for a long time. And um, as soon as we got it, I was like, I'm gonna be there all the time. But I go maybe once a year, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Can't be bothered. <laughs> yeah so yeah that's 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 the crack with me what's the crack with you um i I guess you know things are starting to wind down early ish uh for christmas and things like that so i have been doing sort of some of my last few sort of pet therapy sessions for the for on the run up to christmas Mm -hmm. and they've been really good fun um i i think i don't they talk about this before that the kids are like give me gossip and stuff now maybe i did you did oh my god you were supposed to give us an update i was well there you go it was a perfect yes. time okay okay so um but they i think the last time we talked about it they were to go on they were going out to the cinema together and um maybe? it was it was it was brothers that were interested in her one older one younger yes, yes and yes. um the cinema trip was uneventful i got the, an update on that and then since then the most recent update i've got is that one of them uh one of the brothers i think the younger brother um he was trying to like act the big man as we call it over here oh. <laughs> takes the same for us like a slang episode and trying to kind of really kind of insert himself in, in social situations and stuff like that and it has not gone down well so uh yeah so is it's it very, making her uncomfortable yeah it seems to be yeah yeah which is unfortunate but I think that she was just, yeah, but I, I, I love that she kind of immediately starts telling me this sort of stuff and just sort of gives me the, these these updates, you know, but it's so it's Trusted lovely. So friend. I will, it is. It's really nice. But so I will, I, I'm going to miss them. Um, but um, that's just kind of just on the kind of wrap up towards Christmas thing, because they're all kind of doing exams, I think, or, or whatnot mm-hmm. in the next in the next few weeks. How much time do you guys get off? Do they get off from school? for over christmas i think it's two and a half weeks mm-hmm. i want to say at least two weeks yeah what about what about you it's about the same yeah it's like a week a week it's like yeah two weeks but then they like they get off like early on friday and they don't have to be yeah. back until like the following so it's like 17 days or something it's the understanding that like uh, on the lead up to Christmas, you're just not going to be doing very much either. There's like a week where it's just like, let's watch Christmas movies or things like that. Um, they were, uh, some of them were doing like a media studies class and they were telling me that they're just like watching full episodes of TV shows. And I'm like, that sounds like the decent job for me. <laughs> yeah. I had a, I had a teacher in high school and she won teacher, teacher of the year. Uh huh. Shout out to Barb Murray at Westland High School. I love oh, you um and with that money because she got like a monetary award and with part of that money she bought every single episode of star trek the next generation and so we would be like reading gilgamesh and she'd be like i have an episode of star trek the next generation that has to do with this let's watch it and so like that's half of what we did it was so great that's amazing i love it that's fantastic and that's why that's why i'm a trekkie yeah and then she had like uh Who's the Klingon guy? Worf. Yeah. She mm-hmm. met Worf. And that was nice. like her, that was her meeting like the most. That was she was like, I have to show you this picture of what happened this weekend. And it was like her and like the dude who plays Worf and she was dying. Like it was like if you it was girl. like you you meeting Ram Das or something like that, and that sort of level. Yes, you know, yes, if, yes. You know, before, obviously. Right. Um, to be like <laughs> Ran into We're a not- dead guy today. <laughs> hey, if anybody's going to do it, Ram Dass is going to do it, right? It's true. 
Um, but yeah. Um, so the, I guess the other question I got to ask you about is what's been occurring? Well, so I listening to the people, listening to um what what y'all are saying. Mm -hmm. Um, more Sasha requests. Hell yeah! People want the Sasha, so I'm working on harvesting Andy's social media accounts. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot <laughs> For, in there. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, I also put uh, information about CBT cognitive behavior therapy on the website. Mm -hmm. Um, and it is our 10th episode of Bendy. So we've mm -hmm. actually been doing this for 10 weeks. Yeah. Woohoo. So go. Woohoo. Fireworks. Fireworks. Pew, pew, pew. So congratulations. Yes. Congratulations to you too. Well, it's like we're doing something and we're um, sticking with it. Yes. Which is hard. That's the hardest thing is like keeping yeah. going. Yeah. Yeah. It is. And, you and know. it's fun. It's like it's morphing. I feel like we're starting to like find our rhythm a little bit. Very much so. And uh getting an idea of what the heck we're doing. Yeah, definitely. And <laughs> yeah, and I think people are responding to it, um, which is lovely. Yeah, it's really great. So yeah, go us. I go go us. And I go have... listeners. Like you guys are spreading the word and yes. it's um it's appreciated. So we really do appreciate it. Yeah, thank yeah. you so much, folks. And I do, I love like people comment and I get to respond and just, you know, the community that we wanted to build, I think it's starting to happen and that's yeah. exciting. So, so it's like, yeah, it's, it's good because it also makes force me to work myself because like normally if like somebody pays me a compliment or says something nice, I want to kind of just like push their face away from me. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to like, be like, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and then, and then Peter Pants. And Peter Pants. And then just, yeah. And um, so, you know, every, every, every fiber of my being re resisting the thank you. <laughs> like, I want to say a thank you from my heart, truly, but, you know, it's just not my natural instinct. Right. Right. So, well, yes. Thank you. Exercise that, that tiny, tiny muscle. <laughs> Take a breath. <laughs> Respond with yeah. kindness. Right. <laughs> maybe return a compliment <laughs> yeah well so well that's oh one step at a time <laughs> okay you're right you're right getting out of, getting out of myself yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, so you, our topic this week is the festive season da, da, and i just want to i want to preface this by saying halt the word holiday means very different things in our countries or yeah. our, or opposing countries are different countries. Yeah. So holiday in your lexicon means vacation. Yes, it does. Ho holiday in our lexicon means um actual uh festive event days. Yeah, like Thanksgiving. Which, yep. Is, does Halloween count as a holiday? Yeah. Uh Christmas. They all they they're they're all kind of like you sweets is everything in yep. your country. Holiday is like all every single holiday yeah 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 that we celebrate something i i'm, I'm trying to wonder if there is a specific word that we have it's not spring to mind for like those sorts of periods of time in this country but i don't think so uh but yeah i have seen that because like i do see it in how a lot of american films are titled and things like that it's very much the holidays is a specific thing a specific event yeah but yeah so here we here we go we're heading into the end of the year celebrations and then we the are. beginning of the new year celebrations. So, uh, um, and so and I guess that, we, that comes with exactly. And we want to talk about just that in terms of both, because it's, it's good to talk about it because it's good and it's bad. Um, you know, and it obviously depending on where you're at, where you're from, all of those things. And I think it's nice to kind of bring a wee bit of attention to it. Um, maybe have a bit of fun with it. I will, but also, the, one of the things we talked about as well was that, you know, from our point of view, when we think about the festive period, we're thinking, well, even for us, it's a little bit different, but we're thinking Christmas primarily. We're thinking probably Thanksgiving as well for um, our yes folks. Um, but, you know, we would absolutely love to hear if you have a different concept of what festive means, what this time of year means. If you could like tell us about that, we'd absolutely love to hear it. Yeah. And I read that there are 15 different holidays for different denominations and countries that are happening during that time period oh incredible so yeah so um i'm gonna do a little digging into what those are because i'm just curious and 
Um, Absolutely. No wonder every no what and no wonder everyone freaks out this time of year. It's not just you know the people that celebrate Hanukkah or the people that celebrate Christmas. And then Hanukkah is so it's not you know the it's not their biggest holiday. Yeah. Um, but it, I think it's just because it gets lumped in with Christmas, does, which is this juggernaut does. of a holiday that just kind it of like sure yeah. does suck. It's like a, the black hole holiday. <laughs> the black hole holidays, yeah, it is. Just... <laughs> Christmas colon <laughs> the black hole holiday. <laughs> oh, Christmas! Yeah, uh, you fiend. But I suppose, like, uh, no, I won't get so, well. No, I'm going to get cynical immediately. I suppose the the reason why Christmas is probably as popular as big as it is is because it encourages spending more than any other uh, oh yeah i agree with holiday, that. right I so you know, that. that's always going to draw more attention um but yeah so i you know the first thing um what i was going to ask you about was um it, it's for us i increasingly it has become uh once we get to halloween there seems to be this it's just like okay we're setting up for christmas now and it's like um two months of slowly building up you start seeing like christmas things appear and like shops and, th- and stuff like that you're increasingly seeing uh christmas decorations go up earlier and earlier in the year it's like you know people are starting to put them up at like mid end of november it makes some people furious whenever they go up early which kind of makes me want to do it more <laughs> but is it like that um, in the US, is it more um, kind of a, uh, is it Thanksgiving to Christmas? Is this kind of like big sort of mm-hmm. squishy period mm-hmm. of time that all kind of merges in to get to each other? Or do you start feeling that from Halloween too? Uh, literally Halloween, a few days yeah. before Halloween even. Mm-hmm. So I just, real quick, do you, I, what holiday do you celebrate? Uh, do you celebrate, or I mean, what um, what festive event do you celebrate? <laughs> I guess just Christmas Day. Boxing Day is more of a thing in the UK as well. What is Boxing Day? Uh, so Boxing Day is the day after Christmas. Okay. And like all too often as a kid, um, we would have had um, a Christmas Day. We would have, you know, Christmas uh, dinner, which is obviously a big deal. And we would have then went to our aunt and uncles and had like a very similar sort of thing on Boxing Day. Like I think okay. traditionally. Um, what, is, what is the point of what? what is it? I think Boxing, Boxing Day Boxing was Day. traditionally the day when people would actually hand out gifts. So Christmas Day was the day of celebration and Boxing Day was the gift giving day, but it's it's okay. just all become Christmas Day for the most part, gotcha. you know. Okay. Um but like and I know a lot of other people would do that. So it would be like uh, especially if people had, you know, partners that would sometimes spend Christmas Day with one set of parents sure. and then Boxing Day and with the other and then the other. alternate year uh, you know. Do you guys uh, have Christmas Eve? Yes, we do. Okay. Is that a thing? It is a thing. Yeah, no, it definitely is a thing. And it's something that people, and there are it's like three you know, days of Christmas. Three days of Christmas. I know. We only have two. We yeah. Have two. You need yeah. to get into this Boxing Day thing. No. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Well, you got I, celebration I don't tree and I, I'm sorry. I like hijacked your question, but like, right. what is, where did Boxing Day, what's the history of Boxing Day? Oh, do you know? No, no, you're putting me in the spot. Uh, okay. Listeners, tell tell us what. <laughs> okay, well, I will respond to your yes question while you Google this. <laughs> no, I'm not. It's, I'm just pulling okay. out my brain. How dare you? Okay, anyway, go okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> I can see you googling. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, so um, Halloween this year, just to give you an example of just how much Christmas takes over. Uh-huh. Ha- on Halloween, we. Forgot the little pumpkins for the kids, right? That they go trick or treating with. So Mike went to five different stores in our little town, and went to the last store, and they they got the last two little Halloween trick or treat bags, mm-hmm. and he was so angry. They had to like go to get them out of the back, and he's like, you know, there are other parents because it was already Christmas. Like they'd already taken down all the Halloween stuff. And he was like, there are other people that would spend money on Halloween stuff today. Like you're missing out on, like he was, yeah. I Oh, was yeah, that's true. Carefully worded, uh, yeah, <laughs> constructive criticism <laughs> <laughs> nice. to CVS. Uh-huh. Um, but it's just like, once Halloween happens, then it's all, the music starts. Yeah. 
um the attitude starts the mm. um some people get really like after thanksgiving like on black friday or whatever they start putting up the christmas lights and the christmas trees and like do the whole thing the whole month wow. and there are other and you know like everyone's different every family's different some people don't really celebrate it very much and other people go like all the way um so i'm not disrespecting anybody on how they how they decide to to celebrate their their festive season but uh it definitely takes over and there's a game have you heard about the little drummer boy game i haven't i'm familiar with the little drummer boy but not the game so it's like uh it's basically like how long can you get through the festive season without hearing that song hearing little that song i have heard of this boy. Uh -huh. and so you'll see like people posting on social media like like little drummer boy i'm out <laughs> like they got me <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's, um yeah i feel I, is it played as much because i'm certainly familiar with that song but i don't know if it um is played as much over here so you mean you probably i think i feel like i've heard that game done but with like uh what's a mariah carey christmas song all i want for christmas is yes. you I feel like I've heard that I've heard that game with that song. I don't yeah. actually know if I've ever listened to the song. I don't know why I know that. It's a timeless like, classic. That was a total brain brain glitch. Yeah. What Mariah Carey or that song? Yeah. <laughs> <In particular. Both. laughs> so um so Beth, I've just recalled from my brain that Boxing Day in Britain <laughs> <laughs> it was a custom for tradesmen to collect Christmas boxes of money or presents on <laughs> the first weekday. <laughs> like, 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 Start over. <laughs> on the first weekday after Christmas as thanks for good service throughout the year oh that's nice that's quite nice and actually so it's turned so it's turned into like give giving people stuff yeah I mean like <laughs> as they always do you know ah way to go Amazon right I, I mean I think that it's like it's just such a, and I, I mean certainly in my youth it was very much a sort of like second Christmas almost it was just another sort of day of celebration at somebody else's house so yeah. Is there like sports that's why that are being watched? Uh, or is it no. just like you just eat too much and then you like I mean like I'm the wrong guy to ask in that regard because like there might be. I think there was I think there sometimes was, was football games or soccer games okay. on oh, I know that oh that's asking for trouble. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um um on a on boxing day, I think, but like I'm the wrong guy to ask because you know I have yep. like not yep. a ton of interest in sports yep. uh, but i think but like i know but i do know for example like thanksgiving is there's always a big sort of i watching watching oh i've got to call it american football i'm gonna just gonna do it watching american football on thanksgiving like, is a big a big deal it's like part of the day yeah kind of yeah almost, yeah yep 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 um so how and who do you celebrate with um so i guess i celebrate with uh oh no I, I don't guess i actually celebrate with my my family so i normally uh would have christmas dinner with my parents um it has been um which is always nice i always enjoy the day itself it's it's great i i think uh like especially the period of time between christmas day and new year's day i always find kind of difficult it's just like sort of weird liminal space that is tough to navigate sometimes um but i like the day with my folks and and certainly i think one of the reasons um because we, we used to always like play games as well so we would have christmas day and we would play like scrabble or cluedo as we call it you guys call it clue i think mm -hmm. um cluedo cluedo we call it yep sounds like a monster <laughs> <laughs> how dare you disparage Cluedo uh Cluedo or Monopoly or um what was uh Life? maybe Scrabble sometimes but like I think that is very much one still my sort of love of board games and like even to this day I've been I bring new games down and we normally have like uh Christmas lunch and then we play board games in the kind of like evening and like late afternoon lovely it's good um what about yourself I I leave the country. <laughs> yes, you did. I forgot about that. <laughs> so uh, I, it started. Be, 
it started, I think it started when we went to South Africa. Mm -hmm. And that was just like, we had enough of a block of time off. And then we were like, wow, it's really nice to leave the country and not have to like deal with all of the, like, you know, just the general attitude and the, the, uh, we're both empaths, right? So I like feel the, the angst and I feel uh, yeah. the selfishness and I feel like, I don't know. I, oh, if, um, there's the frustration that's kind of built into Christmas a lot of the there's time. A, I know. Yeah. The expectations and yes. all of that. And so um, we started, Mike lived in uh, this, in the South Pacific. Uh, I've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. So we actually go there every year for, we've done as long as a month um nice. as little as like two and a half weeks um but we we've done it every year with the kids and we literally leave the country um the kids are allowed to ask for two presents from santa because he comes by boat and uh can't carry that many you know fair, right fair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um and then we have, we have to get the presents home so they can't be big right yeah so it's really not uh it's just the four of us usually it's not a big thing you know we That's open nice. pre presents i bring stockings and you know we're friends with people there and the the sweet sweet lady next door always brings gifts for the kids and we always bring them like you know american stuff and it's it's nice it's, nice. Lovely. it's, it's it is great it's i will say like swimming on christmas day is great i'd say so yeah <laughs> I really was. Yeah. And I, I think I'd always quite liked the idea. I don't, I didn't, I wasn't there for one of like an Australian kind of Christmas as well, which was like very much, it was warm and, you know, I mean, it was very warm, <laughs> but I always kind of liked the idea of that in theory as well, you know, um, but it's kind of reminded me of, um, I did a few years uh, or where I wasn't at home for Christmas Um and one of the one of the kind of um, times I really fondly remember, and it really it was in uh, South Korea, where me and kind of all the, this group of <clears throat> English teachers who were out there had like a potluck, and mm -hmm. we just kind of met at my apartment, and we all kind of brought like different dishes and things like that. And it was my first time ever doing a potluck. I was like, I had no idea even what the uh, concept was until that day, and it was just such ah. a lovely memory, and I, it's something that I have done occasionally. When I because uh, certainly uh, with working patterns, unfortunately, this year I haven't been able to have like get togethers or parties, but I would have on the lead up to Christmas maybe done a wee potluck, yeah. you know, because it was always mm -hmm. good fun. <clears throat> but in Taiwan, I had two Christmases there. One was kind of rough because there was nothing really planned and it's not something they really celebrate. And I find it a little bit difficult. I was very kind of homesick uh, that first year. Second year, I had a group of friends. And we did like a kind of um there was like a American like rib uh joint <laughs> and they did it they did like a Christmas dinner type thing for us and where there was like about <laughs> 12 of us and it was actually a really lovely day. Um so that was nice. I think it's just I don't know, I think I kind of like uh, a big group of people to get together. I think there was something special about that, um, uh, particularly. Um but yeah, I, I, yeah, I think I need to do something to mark the occasion certainly anyway or else i find it particularly you know tough mm -hmm. yeah i uh i want well that's a i've got a question that will kind of lead into that but do you have like best memories of like the festive season as like a kid or even as an adult um I do feel like I've talked about this before, but I have such a memory of, I mean, it's all gift related. Like it really is. Like I, I, I think we talked about this maybe uh, in another episode where I, talk, where I talked about like seeing a Lego train set built and I'm yes. like, so thrilled yes. to see that. That's such yes. a kind of core memory for me. Um, um, but like I have fond memories of, uh, you know, especially when I was younger, going around, seeing all my family, good excuse to see my aunt and uncle and, uh, or aunt and uncles rather I should say and um, spending time with them and stuff like that I just kind of liked the kind of flow of that day we kind of had a pattern of it where it would be like we would get up we would get presents hooray presents then we would get ready we would go and visit uh, our uh, various sort of family members we would get my granny and my granda and we would like take them down to the house and then we would just kind of like 
hang out, play other toys, have like some delicious dinner. And it was just a kind of nice, you know, uh, and that is especially when I was younger. And I think that is the real sort of magical time for Christmas is when you're a kid, There, it really is kind of like exciting and fun, you know, but then it just becomes, you know, lessons, I think, over time. Mm-hmm. What about you? Yeah, I, re- I remember, I think it was really, because <clears throat> when we lived in Kentucky, I mean, we didn't have anybody. Yeah. And so it was always just the four of us. And I loved that as a kid, just like, yeah, that, that first morning. And sometimes we'd be in North Carolina, depending on, um, we did a lot of that actually, because yeah. that was when my, t- my parents had uh, time off at the college, but um I love I loved it being the four of us I loved you know that that waking up and like being so excited that there were presents under the tree and then really it was just like us spending the day together um playing games playing with toys um you know listening to Frank Sinatra (laughs) (laughs) and I remember I do have this memory our next door neighbors when we moved to Oregon, like their kids were little and they, they wanted that to ex- get them excited about Christmas. And so they gave us sleigh bells mm-hmm. and, um, my dad pretended to be Santa. And so nice. they like brought the kids out cause we rang the sleigh bells. And then my dad was like, ho, ho, ho. And we like, you could hear the kids and they were like Santa, like oh, freaking out. Oh my here. God, it's Santa yeah. here. And it was just like hiding, you know, like hiding behind the fence and like being so excited to hear their excitement. Um, that was a good, that was a good holiday memory. Yeah, that, that's fantastic. Yeah, really but I nice. really just like not being in the United States. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, highly recommend it. Mike and I, like, we don't get each other anything. Our gift to each other is just like this time absolutely. that we that we spent just together without, you know, and like he has to work and like I've had to work um, back when I was working, but yeah, um, it's just, it's just easy and pleasant and the food is amazing. So yeah, that sounds fantastic. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think in the long run, I would quite <clears throat> like to start spending this period of time away. Like last year I'd said, I, I didn't want to spend Christmas here this year. I am going to, but then I'm going to Scotland, as I said before, you know, for that period between, uh, well, the, Boxing the, Day to after yeah. New Year's. Yeah. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. And it is like, I think for a lot of people it is, you know, I, I, I always think about the people that, you know, don't have families that are as close or, I, and I know for a lot of people, like it is a hard time of, it's just a hard time of year, um, on a lot of levels. So, um, I, it is, it is, uh, I, and I want to talk about that, like, uh, in, in more detail. I thought one of the things I just, cause I, I feel like it, it would be of interest to you or, and I'm sure it uh, is that, um, Mike has asked me, my friend who I'm going over to visit, well, one of my friends going to visit has asked me to go to a Keeley on, uh, New Year's Eve. So it basically is a kind of traditional Scottish or Irish sort of gathering where uh, it involves like dancing and sort of like traditional Irish and kind of Scottish music. What's it called? Achille. Achille? Uh, no, sorry. Not the ah, but just Keely. Keely. Yeah. I, huh. you will, you will never, and not in your wildest imaginations, would you be able to spell this correctly? Okay. Like <laughs> uh, <crack? laughs> it's a, yeah, it's an Irish, it's an Irish term. Uh, I will send, I will send you the spelling of it, but okay. um, yeah. So I'm like, he was like, do you want to go to Achille? And I was like, sure, absolutely. Let's do it. So uh, I'm quite looking forward to that. It'll be a, a nice way to spend New Year's, I think. Mm, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, um, so I want to talk about food. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have like traditional holiday food? Yes. Well, okay. it's different for me now, but like certainly it would be very much our traditional kind of like Christmas spread would be a turkey. Obviously, we would also do ham, like a Christmas ham. Is that a American thing? Do you have yeah. Christmas hams? Yep. yep. Um, we would have like mashed potato, roast potatoes. We'd have like. Um, uh what do you call me like you know bacon wrapped around sausages oh uh, okay um, really yeah <laughs> no, so like real. meat wrapped around meat yeah it is <laughs> it, it, yeah 
I know it's insane. Uh, we would have um, other sort of veg. Brussels sprouts is a really traditional one in this country. Uh, These like, guys are just so gross. Oh, it's awful. I mean, I used to hate them. <laughs> I have started to come around to Brussels sprouts now. Like once I started preparing mm-hmm. them, like with like butter and like you know other sort of nice and, and crisping them up and stuff like that, yeah, I have come yeah. around to them. But yeah, like same. ordinarily, they were awful. Um, and it then, took me to like year thirty before I ate Brussels sprouts. So yeah. It's they're, they're they're tough work, and especially if they're if they're cooked poorly, there's nothing worse. It's we like, would all, we would have spoiled. a starter. Oh, like so much stuff is boiled in this country. It's not. I mean, it's not <laughs> quite as much anymore anymore. But like Northern Ireland in particular, it was like, here's your veg. How is it? How has it been prepared? It's been boiled. Amazing. <laughs> I can't wait for this. Um, so like um, we would also we would have a starter. Um, sometimes you would get like we start we sort of get like prawn cocktail in like recent years but like we would maybe have a like soup as well like a vegetable soup then uh as your dessert we would have christmas pudding with brandy sauce which is my favorite do you have christmas pud no no okay you no. know what it is no no okay is it blood pudding no it's okay. it is a, it is a sweet thing though a party is it like ours. like creme brulee or something no not at all. It's like okay. It's like is it, it kind sweet? of yes. It's oh, kind okay. of really rich, like almost like a really rich fruit, heavy fruit cake. So it's like oh yeah. Um, it's like normally soaked in brandy. Um, like uh, sometimes and um, we've done it before. Like before you eat it, you set it on fire. You you put some brandy over Ooh. it. You set it on fire. Mm, so you got a show and and, <laughs> and dessert at the same time and uh yeah it's it's pretty awesome it's not for everyone but it's one of my favorite favorite parts of like christmas dinner okay what about you so we well we we used to do the traditional like as a kid traditional i don't like ham so we would do it was like but like we would do turkey but we'd already done turkey like the month before so it's kind of like yay more turkey um so but now we um so i'm gonna try and say this right um because uh maria is a, a french polynesian territory mm-hmm. you get a lot of french the french the french influence from france and so we have a, a christmas bouche de noel Ooh. and we decorate it's like a yule log but they like mm-hmm. they gave it a beautiful name um and so we have these little like plastic figures that we collect every year we get another bouche de noel we decorate it keep keep them and then in a little baggie that we obviously wash them uh but so yeah the kids like that's the thing that we do that they get to decorate it but it's like you know it's covered in like tiara flowers too and it's really it's beautiful so it's I have nice. some photo, lots of photos of the bush uh <laughs> and then mike mike um he usually makes like sashimi on a bed of cabbage nice. with as so it's like it's so good it's so good it's just like raw tuna and we love it it's so freaking good so we don't do the traditional uh christmas dinner anymore but it's interesting like in french polynesia it like oysters are a huge thing oh well so like you cannot like everyone is eating oysters and they are flown in from New Zealand and it's like a, you know, they're all frozen, but I'm not sure how you cook a frozen oyster. Chefs, please let me know. Um, But uh, it's just interesting to see uh, like in another, in another culture, like what, what they're, they're all about and definitely like sashimi oysters and bouche de Noël. So it's, I should say, I mean, like, sorry, uh, I, I, that like, you know, certainly my, uh like that's just me sounds amazing but like my current christmas dinner is not like that because i'm not eating meat anymore so like right, it's right. always trickier to kind of know what to eat um but like in the past few years my mom has went to like incredible sort of lengths to like make me something that's suitable for me and i'm like Aww. don't worry about it you know yeah. but it's but it's nice you can get some nice nice like <clears throat> nut roast things and stuff like that that are quite good and like because i still eat fish occasionally you know like that's a sashimi, sashimi platter sounds amazing it's so good it's so, like i don't eat sushi here really yeah and you in the states just because I, I, it's the difference is staggering <laughs> yeah so you know it's fresh it's like well you know certainly when i was in um you know asia like uh, south korea taiwan and things like totally. that. totally amazing yeah. so uh-huh. good 
uh-huh. and it was because I, I sushi in this country I think it's probably the same as yourselves is seen as like a pretty expensive sort of high quality sort of which doesn't make a ton of sense to me especially here because we're like surrounded by oceans and mm-hmm. you'd think <laughs> seafood would be plentiful and easier to access but you know who knows maybe it's the amount of effort it takes to make it I suppose that's true yeah but then but that yeah. goes for all food really yeah yeah it's true so, so yeah I don't understand it fully something and we we went way way past this but it is food related um that I wanted to uh mention was so you were talking about pumpkins for Halloween earlier uh-huh so it's you definitely get pumpkins more now these days that people use and they carve and whatnot but we used to use turnips what <laughs> that's like what's turnip <laughs> turnip is i know what a turnip is i'm okay. just like why oh they're, they're not they're, i don't know they're i not, think they're I not mean, it's cute yeah but they're like you know i mean they're scarier so maybe that makes sense <laughs> than, a, than a pumpkin you know but you don't have quite as much of a canvas with a pumpkin compared to like a, a, Sorry, a turnip. To go- you keep talking i'm googling turnip, oh, turnip, is. So turnip i guess is also i've heard them called swedes as well i think swedes is kind of a more universal term for this it looks like an onion yeah it it's not an attractive but looking but it's firm it yes. doesn't have the rings okay it doesn't it doesn't so it's you not would carve a turnip yeah mm-hmm. that's so hard they're so little I, oh. And like, I mean, you you couldn't put any sort of artistic flair on your turnip, really. <laughs> and I, I, I speak, you know, from my experience anyway. You just uh, like get your Sharpie out and be like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, if, it, if it kind of has eyes and a mouth, you're like doing good. You know, that was my experience. But I wonder, I got to see. My mom may have pictures of uh, some of our prepared turnips. So I must, I must see if I can I fish, see fish those out. Yeah. Your childhood tur- Halloween my, turnip. Our childhood works of art. <laughs> but yeah i um i did not know that <laughs> i know i know yeah because like i i was i was listening to an american podcast recently and they were talking about it they were like what did um like irish people traditionally carve at uh, uh, uh at halloween and i was like oh i know this is turnips turnips and they were like turnips and they're like what what is it like insanity and i was like that happened within my lifetime i did that <laughs> right right you're like that was me yeah that was my experience uh, <laughs> okay mm-hmm. so i'm gonna ask what do you like and dislike what are your likes and your dislikes about the festive season so i like um and it's not happened so much this year and it's partly because i've been very busy is um that i like in the lead up to christmas as uh, the excuse to see people and mm-hmm. to and I often have like organized nights out or, you know, so like with, you know, some of my different friend groups organizing dinners together and stuff like that. Like there was one happened Saturday just passed that I missed, unfortunately, just because I've been busy with other stuff. Um, I'm not, I'm planning to make sure that doesn't happen again because I've really missed those things. So I love, I really love that. I really love that excuse to like go out, spend time with people. I really do. Um, I also love, um the day itself you know spending time with my parents um so those are kind of my favorite things uh i i I, and i definitely am doing things that you know are bringing me that experience this year but not not to the level of my kind of satisfaction i guess Mm -hmm. um what i don't like is i find there's no turnip curving there's no turnip curving yeah i'm like (laughs) where are the turnips they've all been put into stews and it's (laughs) <laughs> it's a disgrace it's a real waste boil of, them it's a real waste of a turnip as far as i'm concerned <laughs> it, when you could be eating delicious boiled turnip yeah um so um i think is that i i don't know there is so much sort of um enforced joy at christmas there's so much you know like isn't it wonderful isn't life grand and i find that really oppressive and kind of Quite it's depressing. the most wonderful time of the year don't you understand just like <laughs> holding me by the collar and telling me i should be joyful <laughs> okay okay i'll be joyful um but i find you know um it to be quite a lonely time of year i find it can be quite um depressing to be perfectly honest i i don't know that i've always felt like that i think there's been times in my life when i've quite looked forward to christmas but i think that 
um certainly in recent years i find them tough i have and i'm i'm i find them tougher i think over the uh certainly the past five or six years in particular um and it's a shame because i have periods of time where i'm really i really love this time of year i really kind of love uh, spending time with with uh you know i love i there are always parts of it i do enjoy and i, I but it's the times the the uh, whenever you're going home and you're like oh okay uh magnified loneliness <laughs> magnified the sense yeah. of uh uh not having joy uh particularly at certain times you know so it's it's a tough one to navigate it really is i would agree with that <laughs> i would agree with that what? and i think part of the reason i leave the country is because i'm well i i'm really i'm i'm i have a phd in avoidance i hear you and i just it's you know it's like um well let me start i'm going to start with my likes mm -hmm. <laughs> um i like that we're now creating like our own way of celebrating yeah and doing it our own way um and showing the kids that they can do it their own way and you know they watch the christmas movies and they see how christmas is done and like home alone right when you like abandon your child at the airport <laughs> um that's home alone too are, are you sorry are you, are you no no i think it happens in both are you using it as like a cautionary tale like we like look see <laughs> I, well, I, I, I did say that i was like this is why i'm always like hold on to me when we're like getting the bags and yeah. like hold on to my sweater or whatever um but they love like the slapstick aspect um yeah. and so yeah like we're probably gonna you know we watch all the christmas story movies and but you know their their experiences they've never they've had w one normal christmas that they both remember mm -hmm. and that was during covid but the rest of like the rest of the time they you know like, yeah, but we, even... just, we do it our way, own way and that's as it should be do you know what i mean and i think like it is a uh it's it's you know it's really true about so many things it's like well this is what we do for christmas and nobody's like well why and it's just like well because it's it's always all we've always done it's like well yeah. okay but it's like yeah. good it's not bad yeah. there's no real examination yeah. of it and um you know and of the sort of com complexity i guess in terms of how it affects people in different ways you know mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. but yeah and i think that you know that happens obviously with a lot of things not just christmas you know but it's, it's just true it's true it's just i don't know because of the um because of you know what is fundamental to christmas is you know the idea of joy or you know everybody coming together and um you know you can see how that can easily turn sour you know and how yeah, that can easily go the other way and it's a shame because it feels like it should be a space to be more kind of inclusive and kind of um connected to a range of experiences that people have but it's just oftentimes it leaves a lot of people kind of out in the cold it's true it's true um another thing i like is that i don't have to celebrate winter solstice <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> i get to celebrate summer solstice twice because i'm on the other oh, side of the yeah, planet that's true. <laughs> it's so great so everyone else is like winter solstice and like and i'm like nope not for me not for me like happy summer solstice <laughs> and i like i'm such a snot i'm such a bee but um i get some joy out of that yeah and then it's nice just to have <clears throat> the time because you know we run away and avoid it's like it's also time for our family to like do a reset and they're older now the kids are so we can kind of talk about like what kind of year we want to have and my and I talk through like what what travel is going to happen this year um mm -hmm. which is obviously already started because I may come and see you in April yes but uh mm -hmm. but that's because he's going to be in Okinawa and he was like if I do this then you get to go somewhere and he was like I think I can get you to see Andy on without like you having to pay for the flight because he's got awesome. miles so I know um so this is the idea um so yeah avoidance is great I like this mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> my That's dislikes mm -hmm. um the commercialization the stress yeah. um the expectations of, of of your time um and 
how, yeah, I, I just to kind of echo what you were saying about how it's not a very inclusive time of year for yeah. people and um, it is depressing and it is lonely and it is those things and no amount of holiday songs will change that. Yeah. So, um, sorry, I'm such a bummer, but no, 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 uh, it's it's almost like the opposite can even apply. It's like you just get bombarded with it, and you're like, okay, <laughs> enough yeah, already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, um, I don't know. There, uh, there's, it's hard to put into words. I guess. The, cyn- the cynic in me as well as the like, you know, so like, um, with Christmas songs especially, it's like if you make a Christmas song, you're you're going to be living off those royalties forever quite possibly because it's never they're never going to stop being played if it's reasonably it's like popular the beatles singing the happy birthday song right yeah and actually happy birthday is copyrighted did you so know I understand. that i did know that yeah yeah uh-huh. and the family never gets royalties <laughs> i mean not don't? all of us who are not we're not we're singing it every year and i don't pay the family <laughs> all right okay yeah yeah but if you <laughs> i think if you sing it on film or uh, yeah, recording yeah. you've got to pay them yeah you yeah. do have to pay and i uh i used to do some of that work and i like you know i remember this is i'm digressing mm-hmm. very far oh. far away but i worked at a college that we were celebrating the centennial and so we we uh had a big like movie in the quad for everyone in all of portland to come and watch and apparently like harrison ford had filmed a movie there Mm -hmm. and i am totally forgetting my point uh what were we talking about Um, this is my covid brain coming back no (laughs) i'm losing it we're talking about uh, christmas music we're talking about um specifically carols how they make you feel um no, you went no. you went somewhere and uh, harrison ford was filming in this place yeah no i lost it it'll come back. It's it'll come back it's okay i have i have a question that is unrelated to anything mm-hmm. what are the paper hats about <laughs> <laughs> oh god okay yeah so we need to talk about christmas is that cr- news is it birthdays is it uh, we need to talk about christmas crackers we need to like take this back a few steps okay so Back it up. Uh, what is a Christmas cracker, and so, why does everyone wear these dopey, silly-looking hats? So the, the hats are just a part of the uh, uh, the whole Christmas cracker of it all. Basically, um, so Christmas crackers are oh, how do I describe them? They're kind. Of, they're a cylinder, and um, they are kind of like tapered at each end. There's kind of handles on each end. It's very look look them up. I'm going to butcher the description of them. Okay. Uh, when you that's what basically how it works is that you with your Christmas cracker, you you give somebody the other end and you pull the Christmas cracker and it will break on one of these two handles and somebody will get will end up with the, the center part of the uh, cracker. And they've won, I guess. I can't remember. There's more significance to it than that. But like, um, so basically, if you pull the cracker and you get the other end, you you win whatever's in, in prizes or in the, are in the inside. Oftentimes they will be a toy like a really or it's like the biggest amount of freaking tat in most crackers so it's like you'll get like uh, nail clippers or you'll get like a comb or you'll get like a, a toy a plastic toy car or some nonsense you will get a, a joke which is always awful okay and you will get a hat a paper hat okay uh, and like obviously we're pretty equitable with the hat so like even if you lose you're gonna get a hat to wear but like uh-huh. My certainly problem with the hat is my head's so big that hats they do not fit my head at all. So I <laughs> rip the paper hats trying to put them on, or like they have the set back. Uh, um, you know, you are jaunty with your hat. I was gonna say like Peggy or something. You know, <laughs> just like Peggy. And um, uh, so um, so and that's 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 it. So that's what the paper hats are. They're they're from crackers, and I guess it's just to go along with the whole like celebratory nature of Christmas Day type thing. So yeah, I don't know it why not, it's not cut on here. I know that I'm surprised because crackers seem like the sort of thing that would probably go quite well. Like you I, know, people love buying stuff. They do. Yeah. So I'm surprised that it hasn't made its way here. Honestly, I think Canadians do. I think. Well, they're part of they're part of the, um, the Commonwealth. Yeah. But not that that means it's yeah, I don't not know. That, yeah. I don't know. Can, Canadians, do you uh yeah, do you Canadians Christmas cracker? Confirm. 
Yeah. Bendy needs to know. Yeah, it's very important <laughs> for research. Um, but yeah, no, that's why the, that's where the paper hats come from. Okay. The Christmas song I was going to say that I do quite like is, and just because there's a layer of like abstraction to it, is uh, Feliz Navidad, uh-huh. which you don't hear very often in this country. Not quite as much. I heard it like more in the US uh, on the lead up to Christmas, but like uh, it's it's nice. It's a nice one. I I I love that one. Uh, I took Spanish for like eight years, mm-hmm. so I know it very well. Nice. So. I'll sing it for you, but not now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll wait for a singing episode. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Feliz Navidad. Okay. Um, so, how would you feel if there were no holidays? Um, hmm. I mean... I hmm. wipe it from the board. I think overall, I would be pleased. Mm-hmm. I... Um, you know, I am pretty good at spending time with people and organizing things with people anyway. I like it. It's an, I like having an excuse and that kind of gives me it. But I think if there was an absence of that, I would just do it anyway. So I think I prefer the freedom of spending time with people that I care about, uh, you know, whenever without the pressure, the extra pressures that come with Christmas and the extra, all the crop that comes with it so yeah, yeah. i think yeah. i would prefer uh no holidays yeah same yeah i like i mean it's fun with the kids but i yeah. know at some point that will shift and uh like we didn't celebrate thanksgiving this year because we all had covid and it was just like oh, no one yeah. felt like we were we you know no one could eat <laughs> so yeah it was just like we just didn't do it and it was just kind of like cool okay you know like so um i yeah i would i would be cool if it wasn't a thing yeah totally i think uh yeah and it's like and i am um, very happy that are you know people enjoy it and um and um there may be a stage where I kind of go back to kind of quite enjoying it again as well you know but yeah. um I just feel like the pressure is um bad and it gets worse as kind of time goes on as well you know it really do you does think do you think for you it's the pressure to be like happy yeah I think that's definitely part of it anyway yeah. it's just that sort of enforced I mean like enforced anything's bad but like enforced happiness seems particularly cruel you know <laughs> <It really does. laughs> and also it, it, counterintuitive cruel. in a lot of yeah. ways you know totally totally so okay so if you could make your perfect festive season what would that look like Ooh, ooh, i'm gonna have to think about that oh no no i'll just i'll just work out the process uh yeah in talking uh, <laughs> i guess it would be i would just love the opportunity to spend i think i would maybe like a week right and in that time i would get to do activities with my friends like you know very lucky to have you know many kind of wonderful groups of friends and some of them move in very different circles so like it's always been funny sometimes whenever i have parties because like people from wildly different backgrounds yep. are together and it doesn't yep. always work it you know it's already worked for me <laughs> but it doesn't always work for everybody else right. so it would be nice to just have the excuse to spend just um within a week i would like go to one you know i would go and spend time and do maybe like a yoga retreat type thing with some yoga friends then i would just go and do some like um with my like video game sort of friends just you know like last year we like dressed in suits and went axe throwing things like that do you know what i mean like stuff i like saw that. photos of that it yeah. looks amazing it was great fun um <laughs> and um no it was two years ago wow but like just things like that i just kind of want to kind of have an ex- a reason to spend time with people i care about and do things that you know are meaningful to us you know mm-hmm. i like that what about you i think i'm i'm already doing my perfect festive season yeah. Like you are, it's a good one. Yeah, yeah. So I wouldn't really change a thing. <laughs> Except for maybe, maybe like, like, maybe we would just leave earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just stay there for like three months. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Uh, 
just right. Those are the questions I have for yeah. you. Do you have any? I think, um, I, I mean, like I had wanted to ask about, um, because I think it's sometimes unclear for people here, the distinction between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. in the in the UK, I think they are very much the same thing. Like I think, you know, like spiritually, there's kind of the same thing. Like um, it's all about getting, getting together as family to eat. But are they both kind of like that? Uh, traditionally they are i mean the history is i don't know if i'm going to speak to the history it's sure, very no, no, complicated no i i, I guess but I'm just yeah, talking to about answer your question yeah to, for for yeah the overall purpose now now nowadays is um to get together and spend time together and eat yeah because I, I guess then my question is um does that make one or, or or two of them feel a wee bit redundant or kind of unnecessary. Do you know what I mean? If they're both kind of filling the same sort of thing, mm -hmm. is there is there? I mean, I would. Uh, I'll yeah, in trouble I would that, say but... no, no. I, I Christmas feels different. Okay. Um, because the the their presence involved. Yes. Because people are spending a lot of money. Getcha. Um, the expectations I think are higher. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Because of that. Um. And, you know, depending on your religion, you know, you're actually celebrating um, the birth of Jesus. Yep. I, oh, I don't want to get into too much. No, no, there, no, 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 no. You're, I think, I think what, you're fine. Yeah. You're fine. You're fine. Uh, I, I, I suppose, <laughs> uh, like, I mean, so like, I suppose just very generally, of course, um, because everyone's experience is different. It's, mm -hmm. it's it, Thanksgiving is kind of about meeting with your family and having a big yeah. meal generally yeah. yeah okay yeah literally like it's just the um it's about um gratitude yeah and i think that's how most homes and families celebrate it um it's <laughs> it's 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 a, i think but it's the, his, a, the history is complicated sure no and i know that it is yeah yeah i know that yeah. it is I, I suppose i'm just and i mean like i suppose even the history of I mean, so many friggin' holidays is kind of uh, yeah complicated uh yeah. not particularly great a lot of the times um right, right. but like that what you know what they have become is is always kind of quite interesting to me and like i i, I hear and i hear you know hear about christmas over here as well is that like uh people dread it a little bit uh, sometimes uh, again uh, generally speaking in terms of like i have to sit around my fa with my uncle who i haven't seen in a year and i have to hear about his views on x y z yeah <laughs> like there's a it clash was, for so here like thanksgiving i'm not saying it's not full of pressure yeah because the airports are insane like that's the time where everyone's flying and yeah especially right now just given like the political culture and of course. the nature of everything that's going on in our country is, yeah. it, you know it's it's like how how are people going to get through a meal with their uncle who or aunt or whoever who has different differing beliefs yeah and like that's a whole thing and yeah you know that's there's a lot of there you know i think i don't i think that things are shifting a little bit because um people don't even want to have the conversations and so yeah, you know, I think there's that's true. a little bit of disconnect and, and people are starting to do things a little bit differently because, because of that. So it's always such a funny dynamic, you know, in terms of like, it's a day for giving thanks substantively. And it's actually a sort of, um, you're, you're having to navigate this kind of tricky, yeah. <laughs> tricky. Well, I have, a, I have a friend who works for the sheriff's department. Uh-huh. And he's like Thanksgiving. We get so many calls because there's so so many domestic violence. Yeah, there's so many families that are fighting over whatever topic, and they can't. You know, everyone's drinking, and then he's like, "It's it's a very very busy day." Which is <laughs> like yeah. fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Yay. Yeah, right. <laughs> so funny. So yeah. yeah. But you know, very much we uh, we wish everybody out there is having has a nice and pleasant Thanksgiving and Christmas and festive period, no matter what you're doing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and they, yeah, I would just say like do it your own way. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Um, just like, ratchet it down, people. Yes, like it doesn't like, need to be everything. Exactly, to everyone. 
exactly like all these things just as long as you know you're not hurt, hurting yourself or anybody else just yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just you know have fun yeah yeah um um yeah so um i think we're about time to move on to talking about dreaded things <laughs> <laughs> speaking our, of a joyful time of year <laughs> and our favorite questions <laughs> uh our favorite topics uh beth uh what's uh what's been bringing you joy this week so i had um this is like sad and happy mm -hmm. yesterday was the anniversary of my dad's death oh mm -hmm. um and i like mike had left um to go to the airport and the kids were watching uh some christmas movie okay and i went in the kitchen and just like i found i'd given my dad and uh, my pink ipod in like mm -hmm. 2007 and I, my mom or my sister had given it to me to try and like pull the music off of it mm -hmm. and so i was in the kitchen and i was like oh my god i have that ipod that i haven't listened to in 16 years and because i just haven't been able to and I was like, and I have the same charger because I, I still have like the original, the, I still have my original iPod. Amazing. I know. And it's still like full of music. And nice. so I put it on and it came on. And so it was the music that he would take walks to. Um, it was also music that he would take walks to while he knew he was dying of cancer. Wow. So um, it you know, it was kind of heavy and loaded. And of course, like all these like opera songs come on and I'm, I'm like in the kitchen, like wearing my, my, my nightgown. And just like, I go in the laundry room and I'm crying and the kids come in, they're like, what's going on? And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm honest, you know, I'm just like, it's grandpa chips, you know, it's the anniversary of when he died and I'm just yep. sad. And then they were like, well, let's dance. Nice. And I was like, okay. So like, you know, and then all of a sudden, like Miles Davis. No, what was it? Oh, I can't remember. Anyways, it was like disco came on, and mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. Miles Davis came, like all these other you know songs, and we just we literally had a dance party. And so I was something that where I was just like, okay, I'll go like cry by myself, like the kids, and I turned it into a moment where it was like. We did. We danced for like an hour, I think. You know? <laughs> That's awesome. And let him stay up late. Like the dog ate Charlie's dinner. <laughs> nice. Because <laughs> we were just like, you know, it was it was really cathartic and therapeutic. So I'm gonna make. I told my mom this, but I'm gonna pull. I've got now. I've got the playlist. I yeah. can you know. So I was like, how do you listen to music? Do you know like CDs? Yeah. Apple. So I'm gonna make an Apple yeah. playlist and and I'm gonna send that to them so that they have it too. No, I love that. It's awesome. Yeah. So it's like bittersweet joy. Yeah, absolutely. That's nice. As close to joy as I can get, Andy. Yeah. You'll take it. We'll take it. <laughs> I'll take any of that. <laughs> as close as we can get to that joy. Yeah. So what about you? Um. I, you know, I'm going to do one because, well, um, I've talked about it before, but I don't think, well, from our last episode, which we will oh, yeah, talk about. Oh, yeah, I know, I know. I'm going to bring it up again, just because I think it's quite lovely, especially at this time of year. And it's always something that is, it's something that keeps being in my head. But there's a comic book I read a while ago called, uh, oh, no, is it Six Billion or Eight Billion Genies? Six Billion Genies? Oh, will I cut this? Will I cut this? Oh, <laughs> you won't. <laughs> Are we going to edit this part out? When Are we going to edit this part out? The part of your joy. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's called Eight Billion Genies, uh, not Six Billion Genies. <laughs> uh, so uh, basically, it was uh, be, uh, the, 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 the comic uh, series was uh, eight issues long. It was uh earth's population got to eight billion when it did um each human got a genie and was given one wish and uh, as the series went on it was presented that you know basically this was a way to kind of reset the earth because like once the earth was getting really to that like overpopulated limit this was a way to kind of like you know uh, uh go take those numbers down a bit because like people would you know wish for dumb stuff <laughs> right um right. So you know it's cautionary tale in a lot of ways, but as you, as the as it goes on, you kind of find that it's about 
um, uh, finding this kind of perfect wish. That's their ultimate goal is. And uh, it gets to the uh, very last. Uh, this is, so this is a spoiler for Eight Billion Genies, which is a good comic series if you're interested. But it's not a massive spoiler. But it gets to the final wish. And the final wish I thought was really beautiful, has really stayed with me. And uh, it essentially goes like this, which is that I wish that everyone loved the way they would like to be loved. And I was like, mm -hmm. perfect. Or the way they want to be can loved. You, can you say that? I just let, I want to get it in my brain. Can you repeat okay. that? So uh, I wish that everyone loved the way they want to be loved. That's wonderful. Yeah. And I think it's a nice way to think about love as well. I think it's, you know, it spoke to me because I think it's kind of like, why I love <laughs> you know and um I do try to like you know uh, tell people if, if and when I can obviously it's a tricky word to navigate <clears throat> a lot of the time because it's mm -hmm. it's so loaded you know what I mean but I think it kind of expresses that in a but I just I think I kind of try to treat people with love and I thought that was a really lovely way of thinking about it conceptually you know I think that's a great way to and this episode about the things that we were talking about yes too i think it's really timely i think so i think it's a good it's a good one that i go back to especially at this time of year when things are tough it's a, it's a nice way to think about oh, the world you know mm -hmm. what yeah. was going on in the background there alexa her oh no she's gonna shout at me again oh no i really didn't plug alexa in this room She's gonna make a. She's gonna make a fill out of me, Alexa. You're getting gonna steal our podcast, Alexa. You're Pass getting it on her own. <laughs> Jeff Bezos is gonna come round and. <laughs> hey, he's outside your door right now. <laughs> he, he's there. He's so muscly. It's him. It's him. <laughs> uh, but oh, anyway, folks. Good. So yes, mm -hmm. lovely to chat to you as always. We hope that you have yes. a nice festive season, no matter what you're doing. And as we said at the yeah. start of the show. If you have other festive traditions or you celebrate in any any ways this time of year, we'd kind of love to hear about it. Yeah, and we'll share whatever you send our way. So yes. Yeah. Educate and entertain. yeah, I'm, I'm curious and entertain. yeah, it is. It's always uh, yeah, yeah. That's too good. I know, aren't okay. we? Okay. <laughs> okay, folks. So <laughs> as always. We would like you to stay, stay bendy. bendy. Yeah, that was pretty good. good. Self review. Okay, good. Excellent. Good, good. Bye. Excellent. Nice work. <laughs> we love bye, you. Bye, bye, bye. bye, bye. Okay. Nice. Good. Fuck yeah, man. That was excellent. It was a good episode. Sorry. Fucking turnip. I know. I had to go back to it because it was like, best way to love this shit. Because <laughs> it occurred to me when you were talking about pumpkins and I was like, oh, I have to tell her about this. Turnip. Turnips. As well. This is episode 10. Yes. Pardon me. Okay, cool. Getting into desktop. Do you want, do you want to keep going? Um, I... I could, but I, I, I wouldn't mind doing it tomorrow if that if that works for you. That's if it's totally fine. Okay. Oh, I can. I have an eleven o'clock. Okay. We can do it, but then. I could do. Yeah. If that's if it's okay with you, I mean, like I can do now, but like I'm a wee bit well, of energy. But that's I, okay. No, no, no. Honestly, so if tomorrow, we tomorrow, mm -hmm. I could do. Um, let's see. Yeah, I've got. Well, I could cancel Claudia. No, no, I just no, have to no, get no. the kids at like one forty-five, so I could do like noon to. I could do noon. Yeah, I don't know if that's too late for you. No, no, no it's fine. No, it's fine. No, it's fine because that's when we did. We were doing. Okay. Uh, 